Hi, this is a quick video about testing 3mm birch ply on my K40 Chinese laser cutter, 40 watt laser cutter um, of the normal variety. Um, I bought this specifically because it's uh, supposed to be intended for laser cutters. Um, if it doesn't work, it's not necessarily the fault of the company that sold it to me. Um, I think that these these laser cutters tend to be quite variable in quality and power. So although it's rated at 40 watts, it may not actually be 40 watts. I have no real way of knowing without buying a laser intensity measure. This is just a, a test sample of the uh, birch ply that I bought off eBay. Uh, it only cost a couple of quid. Um, and it's just intended to, to let you find out if this ply is compatible with your particular laser cutter. There's, uh, so there it is, 3mm birch ply. I'll talk a bit more about this later on, but I've started to suspect that this may not actually be birch ply. At the very least, I'm certain it's cored with balsa wood, not birch, and it may be poplar on the outside faces. It's very light, so that's probably going to help it. Uh, dense material doesn't cut too well. Well, dense wood doesn't cut too well on my K40. Very nicely packaged. This is the test shape that I'm going to be cutting on this. So the idea is that, uh, for instance, if the laser, the laser will always be cutting a slight offset from the edge. Um, and if that's correct, then the offset on the inside of these teeth should exactly compensate for the laser width. The offset on the outside of these teeth, it needs to be compensating in the opposite direction. So if you get the laser set up correctly, the teeth should fit together precisely. Just going to do a little bit of promotion for uh, my own coding work. This is SketchUp. I'm going to use my own G-Code export plugin. Uh, this I wrote specifically for SketchUp with laser cutters in mind. Uh, since I wrote this, I've extended it to be able to cope with CNC routers. The beam diameter I have set, this is kind is not exactly the diameter of the beam. This is the width of the path that is actually cut through the material by the laser. So it's not exactly the beam diameter, but it's a similar thing to your tool diameter in CNC machining. This is probably too fast for the birch ply. Um, I find that when cutting um, either ply, um, this is MDF which is specifically intended for a laser that I've been cutting on this. And also when cutting uh, shapes out of veneer, the trick with wood seems to be to make the laser go quite fast but at a high power. If it goes slowly at a, low, uh, at a high power, the wood starts burning. Um, but if you don't have the power set high enough, it won't go through. So it's a real balancing act and the, the settings seem to be quite different for, for each different type of wood composite or, or product that I've tried. Um, so this is actually going to cut at 70 millimeters per second which is probably too fast for the laser to get through uh, even at full power. What I may have to do is increase the number of times the laser traces that same path to get through this wood. Testing where the laser is going to hit that wood. Bring it slightly in the corner. So, as 
I said, that was quite a fast cut there. Probably too fast. So that was at full power. So now I've gone to the opposite extreme. This is two millimeters per second feed rate. The last cut was 70 millimeters per second feed rate, but the beam is still at full power. And again, potentially this is too slow and the material will get charred and possibly catch fire. But I just want to establish the highest and lowest feed rates. Okay, I can tell this isn't working out. So this time I've stepped up the feed rate to 10 millimeters per second. I'm going to try going over the cut four times. Okay, so this is getting a bit charred, but it does look a lot more hopeful as to getting through the wood. Okay, that's probably gone through already, so I'm going to quit that there. So that is looking really hopeful. Um, I managed to get through there probably with only two goes over the cut, maybe even less, and that was on 10 millimeter second feed rate. Um, at full power. So what I'm going to do now is decrease the feed rate just a tiny bit um, and see if I can get through there in one go without charring the wood. So actually what I'm doing now um, I increase the feed rate to 30 millimeters a second um, and assumed um, it may take about three goes to get through. Okay, the cut is looking very nice, not that much charring. Oh. Maybe the key with this is actually to decrease the laser power slightly. This is starting to look like quite a nice finish. I think the key is to reduce the laser power. That probably went through in one. You can see that almost got through. So, not quite. This is 25 millimeters a second, again at just over the minimum laser power. So in fact the laser is running at about 4 milliamps current at the moment. So again, even very close to the lowest power setting it nearly went through. And that's actually very close to about 0.18 millimeter um, cut width. I guess we would call it kerf. Um, the sides aren't too charred. Um, apparently one of the selling points of this ply is that it's supposed to reduce charring uh, quite a lot. Um, you can see the, where the smoke has passed over the surface of the plywood, but I reckon that that would probably wipe off fairly easily or sand down a tiny bit. Um, 
overall um, this is a really nice lightweight plywood it kind of smells like wood when you're cutting it rather than chemicals which is uh, some of the composites that I've tried on this machine do smell quite unhealthy but this one smells healthy-ish like wood smoke um, pieces fit together well nice clean edges um, and I'm quite optimistic that this machine could actually handle thicker versions of this same plywood um, it may get a slightly less good quality cut but this is extremely good plywood for this machine so to get this last piece the settings that I used were 15 millimeters per second feed rates and three cuts over the same cut path and again that was about quarter power on this dial um, with the current showing about four milliamps here I've been doing some more reading about uh, lightweight plywood um, and although it says birch here I'm actually starting to wonder if it genuinely is birch and not poplar um, because as far as I could tell reading about it uh, on the internet uh, light plywood tends to be poplar not birch uh, with a balsa core at least I know enough about wood to recognize that that is indeed a balsa core here so if the core is balsa and it's described as lightweight or light plywood the likelihood is that this is poplar and not birch uh, but again I don't know enough about poplar or birch to to be 100% sure but at least every other supplier of light plywood uh, has actually described it as poplar rather than birch I've also had fairly good results recently with 2mm MDF which is described as laser safe this was actually sold as laser grade medite, medite. Um, I'm not sure how you'd say that um, you can tell by the charring that it wasn't exactly an easy job with my 40 watt laser cutter um, I cut it at 10 millimeters per second on full power um, and I had to do a few passes over the cut um, but at least I know that this is uh, I can reliably cut through it um, and at least as a base material to stick other stuff onto it's fine um, I think uh, with the charring I probably wouldn't use this as uh, it's not really suitable to be used as a final finished face on a project well I hope you found that interesting I thought it would be useful just to go through the process that I usually go through when I get a new material that I want to laser cut um, because this is a general method you can use to get your machine set up for almost any material just as long as it's laser safe of course if you think you might find this video useful please do like uh, subscribe for more open source electronics kind of makery sort of stuff I make videos about Arduinos including the obligatory Arduino watering system um, I modified a Chinese laser cutter to run on G-code I started using that to make laser cut marketry I also made a blog about building my own CNC machine from scratch uh, using acrylic sheets and uh, the open build C-beam system so there's a whole playlist which will kind of show you the process and all of the designs for that CNC machine are available for you to download um, and you can make your own I used that CNC machine to engrave some veneer to create a replica of the puzzle box from the Hellraiser series of films uh, which was my entry for the Instructables Halloween contest this year there's a lot of miscellaneous stuff on my channel but if you're into maker stuff you're probably going to find it interesting to subscribe I'm really happy that I breached the 500 subscriber mark uh, before the end of 2016 um, and I'm really looking forward to see what this new year brings. 